And we're back. All right. What were we doing? Uh, hunt for Villa Close. Need to obtain a union passport. We already did that. We never did that. We could always go back and do that. We don't have that much money. Farmlands to the northeast of the Hallow. How do we get back down? This way. So we want to go northeast, which I believe is up this way. Hello, castle. Someone has scrawled a cursed place underneath. Clockwork Kingdom, someone has scrawled the kingdom is broken underneath. Thornwood Manor, we've already been to Thornwood Manor. Southeast Hallowshire. I'm guessing that this is over cuz I didn't I don't remember seeing the I wish I could zoom out. I don't remember seeing the ruins down that way unless it's that thing right there. Don't forget to get our sword out. I don't know if that's a friend or not. Come on. There we go. More delusion. Telescope. Allows the user to see long distances. The magnification has been further enhanced by cipher inscriptions within the device. That's pretty cool. That's very, um... Whatchamacallit? It's very FromSoft. Got our lock picks back. Pick up this health pot.
There's uh, an elevator over there. Are these the farmlands? The villager slumps forward, face faint, voice faint. Please, some food, please. Don't know that I have any food. You guys want to come down here? I just want to talk. Those bastards. The Union will pay for what they've done. Five years ago, they came and outlawed all the priests. Since then, the crops have withered. The cattle have died. The rich folk in town can buy imported food. But out here, we're starving. Even the bell tower crumbled with nobody to repair it. And now they've sent in their guard dogs to finish their job. What the Union is doing is terrible. I want to help. I'm sorry, but I don't know you. You could be working for the Inquisition. Not not that I have anything to hide, you see. I was expecting uh, you cannot rest in somebody else's bed. Need 30 charm. Okay. I do my duty as an agent. God worship is outlawed, and these people are violating apostatic law. But it's hard not to sympathize. The famine is bad here, and people are starving. It's clear the Union isn't doing enough to help. I don't blame these people for looking for a solution. I don't blame them, but I do punish them. that two dollars I want my two dollars get up there inquisitor The Inquisition agent is watching a body swing from the gallows with grim fascination. Cultists riddle these hills like vermin. Whenever we lift a rock, it doesn't scuttle out. Anyone could be secretly devout. So watch yourself, stranger. Our eyes are on you, too. They worship something named Pegath, nasty old fertility god. Our scribes have traced him back to the Middle Ages, which would make him ancient, if this isn't some imposter. Whatever this is, our scryers are picking up Class B energies around the farms and the castle, so it's a big one. Some of the people around here are bearing mutations consistent with fertility curses, so we're close. There's something here. I'm not sure what's here. We found a cache of fertility idols, and the, a Wiccan priest was hiding in a sacred chamber. There's something we're missing, though. Something big. We've, we've interrogated a few of the locals. Everyone breaks eventually. But when these lot blurted something about a bell tower, some silencing curse kicked in. Their mouths filled with maggots, thousands spilling from their lips until their throats ripped open. Funny thing is, there's not a bell tower around here. We'll have to widen the search. There's not a basement. Okay. In an old bell tower. Um, which 
way are we going? I wanted to go see what was over this bridge. I see a godling over here. I think we might even be able to get to this one. We can. All right. Godlet. Needs to grow back. Don't get seen by Mothra. Go away. I don't want any trouble. Moonlight butterfly slain. Ow. Rusty bow, I'll take that. Can I equip that in... Not super great, but I can see it being useful. What's this music? Here lies the largest Imbirian ruin in the Oniaric Isles. We trade an Underlands metal in Imbirian antiques. So this is Rustburg, okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, lift is not active.
No, thank you. On this year, 1406, the town of Rustburg is hereby abandoned. By decree of the apostatics, no coin shall pass between hands here. Let this be a warning to all who harbor Wiccans and their vile gods. Door is barred from the other side. Hi there. Turn on, please. Nope. Ah! That's no fair. I'm supposed to get confused by the door. Some lockpicks down there. Oh, where? There you are. Backstab. I thought there was somebody else in here. Guess not. Herb wine, a wine made from fermented herbs. What with the uh, apostatic union's insatiable thirst for the stuff and the limited farmland available in the Sky Realms, most alcohol is fermented through alchemical means.
Die, please. Thank you. Delusions. Uh, I would really like some more lockpick, please. And let's go ahead and activate this. There's something down there as well. I already got that. I want to see what's over here across this bridge. It looks like money and a health pot. And one of these. No, thank you. Oh, did you kill that guy? Thank you. That was real solid. I'm gonna run away now. My girlfriend plays a lot of old school RuneScape. And so from afar, a lot of these characters just look like RuneScape characters to me. I know very little about old school, old school RuneScape. She messaged me at like two o'clock in the morning this morning and was like, I'm trying to kill boss. It didn't work. The Imbirian breathes heavily, leaning on her sword. I could tell you were a persistent one, though I have to admit I didn't think you'd make it in here. Still, you're lucky I got here first. These synthetics would have torn you limb from limb. I came to help you. I don't need your help, and I know you're only after mine, so the answer's still no. Now stay out of my way. Behind that door are the answers I seek. I've just got to catch my breath. The door is sealed by an unseen device. Something has changed. The Imbirian kneels, head bowed, sagging beneath the weight of her armor. Her body convulses. After a moment, you realize she's quietly sobbing. Hearing your approach, she falls silent. Are you okay? Not really. You know, she found me in one of these places, in one of these coffins. It was Vela, 
She was eight years old. When she pulled me out of that machine, coughing up ancient fluids, I couldn't have been much older. And so I was born into this world. I was lucky. Vela's father took me in and schooled me like his daughter. But I never found anyone who could explain my strange birth. I never found anyone like me. I thought this place might be different from the others. I thought it might explain something, but it's just another dead end. You really are an Emberian. Who can say? Perhaps before the world end, I was raised by a loving family who thought I'd be safe in here. Or maybe I'm just a child of machines and magic. I'll never know for sure. I understand that now. But though none of these rusted tombs have given me answers, each one has fueled my anger. The Emberians threaded their needle through the world, altering its tapestry to their whims. And for what? The more I learn, the more I see their greed, their self-interest, their lust for power. And in the end, I destroyed them. It destroyed our world. Scholars can debate over scant evidence for an age, but who doesn't feel the truth in their guts? 400 years ago, the Emberians caused the world rend with their feckless ambition. That is their legacy, and I feel the weight of their sins. The Emberians are long gone. Their guilt is not yours to bear. You are right. It should not be my guilt alone. It should burden us all. For we can see, plainly as by starlight, the injustice that was wrought upon this world. When, when such putrid histories repeat, do we not have a duty to act? All of this I said to Vela time and time again. At first I thought Vela would simply listen to me. We had often plundered harmless and bearing relics, while leaving that which seemed unstable or dangerous. Why should this be any different? But the map we found, and the artifact it promised, they rekindled something in her, a passion, an ambition that could not be quelled. She was determined to change the world, even if it meant dooming it. So what options did I have left, other than my sword? I spilled the blood of my friends, my family, and still, I failed. You've not failed yet. Together, we'll finish what you started. Uh, before your time, recruit the mysterious warrior who wears a suit of ancient Imperian armor. But then she looks at you, a fire in her eyes. You're right. For too long I've clung to the past, felt like I owed Vela something. But this is bigger than the two of us, bigger than anything else. If I have to kill my sister to save the world, so be it. Just promise me one thing. If, against the odds, we manage to fight our way to Vela, leave her to me, okay? It's settled then. I'll help you. I'm the only other person in the Sky Realms who saw the map Vela's following, so I know where to find her. But we'll need others. I heard you captured Vela's old fortress, the Blinding Light. I'll make my way there. Oh, and thank you. Say we embraced a delusion. No, we got a glimmer of delusion. Okay. Glorious treasure. This takes me back, right? So we did that. Um, Saul thinks she returned to her ancestral home in the Endless Realm. You should start there. Skilled techno archaeologist who was once a dark star mercenary. Saul believes he may have returned to his homeland in the Clockwork Kingdom.
Okay. I saw that uh, godling, god lit, whatever, pop in, and I was like, ooh, another one. But it just disappeared immediately. Um... I had an idea for a game about a cartographer and the whole gameplay mechanic would be that you would go around exploring the world and filling in the map. Kind of like um, an Assassin's Creed or a... Um, uh, what's it called? Horizon Zero Dawn type game, but instead of combat, it would just be making the map. Something like um, Death Stranding with the combat stripped out. Hello, mind someone has scrawled bandits underneath. Where are you? You need 25 charm to talk your way in. I need to invest in some charm. I see you up there, Moonlight Butter Butterfly. Uh, I see you as well. What are you? confused about the arrows. Okay, there we go. The animation looks a little bit janky. I think you're loosing one arrow and then re-doing another one, but it just looks like the same arrow is hanging in the sky. Uh, okay, there's a cave. Take that. Cartography landmark. Some more beer. And just sleep. I think that I think that they were supposed to have a health file, but they just didn't for whatever reason. Can I lose you?
Keep looking that way. Keep looking that way. Nope. Ow. Got him. All right. Give me this. We embraced a delusion. What do we got? Uh, we should get some more charm. Ten armor, ten spell cast. I don't think that's good for us. Where do we see our... There we are. Uh, 30 armor, 10 defense? Yeah, let's keep that. Jitter seed. Uh, hollow bell tower. We need to go to the bell tower to find the cultists, if I remember correctly. Notice me, don't notice me. In the butt. Interesting. Another one of you guys. I'll take that. Would you guys have any recommendations for where I could get a Palestine pin to go with my Black Lives Matter and non-binary pin? I tried on Etsy and for some reason they canceled the order. So I was wondering if you guys might have any recommendations. I would also accept a kafaya. If you knew where to get one of those, that could, you know, help support people. Hidden entrance in the bell tower. Music is gone. We got the godlet. All right. Let's go in. Ha! 
Hi there. Are you a friend? Tiny insects scurry over the being's face. The stench is overpowering, sickly sweet. It leads in to smell you. I smell that your flesh is plump and healthy. Pegath has blessed you indeed. I want to make a tribute to Pegath. Very well. In ages past, those loyal to Pegath would ferment a delicious wine from the mushrooms of the island. They would flow exuberant parties and delight in his greatness. Bring this wine and Pegath will grant you an audience. But I can see that Pegath wants for nothing. Are my prayers not enough? Pegath seeks more than prayer, a tribute no less. Ah, uh, for this mushroom wine. Its face contorts. I'm afraid you do not have the wine. Oh, that was kind of cool. So we need a wine. We need a wine for that. Um... Please stop that. Oh my god, stop. There we go. I don't know if that was intended, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. No, thank you. Does this need a key? No. There we go. Remarkable treasure. We're getting a lot of money. I suppose that's good. The youth is fumbling with a teacup, a spoon, and an assortment of other objects, which all appear to be floating. Goddamn wizards wouldn't know good spell fit. Hmm? The objects clatter to the floor. Are you trying to get into the academy too? I wouldn't bother. You could enchant a silk slug to shit gold and they'd still ignore you. They won't let you in without a recommendation. Uh, why are you playing with all that stuff? Why, these are demonstrations of my most sophisticated cipher spells. See this spoon? He shows the spoon into your hand. It is damp, sodden. I've created a spell to make any object sweat. Incredible, no? The applications are limitless. I can't think of a single use for sweaty spoons. Well, that just says more about your lack of imagination than anything else. But that's just one of my spells. See this teacup, put it to your ear and you'll have you'll hear a man crying. That's a real man, though I have no idea where he is. Oh, and this hammer? It's the safest hammer in the world as it can't actually hit anything. He continues like this for some time. Eventually, you seize a chance to interrupt his monologue. You look busy. All right. Um, I'll take that. Uh, bye. Uh, the Endless Realm. 
the Wobbly Noggin. Hello, town. Uh, let's go back to the Wobbly Noggin. We'll sleep until morning, and then we will get out and do something else. Actually, we don't even have to do that. We can just do that. None of the mushroom wine. Alright. So it's uh, this way to the endless realms. Endless Realm, Imberian Ruins, Hallow Town. Hallow Shire Cartography. Scholars ask you to locate foreign landmarks in Hellshire. You have found and marked them all in your notebook. Be sure to return to the scholar to receive your reward. Uh, how do I get over there? Do I just swim over there? YOLO. Nope. There we go. Okay. Uh, hi. The creature looks at you from sunken eyes. It shifts behind its massive jaw. It appears physically incapable of lifting its head. Be still, human. Only those who embrace their wretchedness may claim their second self. I have embraced my wretchedness. May I pass? It is one thing to say the words, it is another to truly comprehend their significance. I do not believe you are ready, human. What's the second self? Long ago, the goblins of the forest perpetrated a heinous evil. To this day, their kind still bears the burden of this guilt. So they carve themselves a new self in the form of a mask. When the goblins wear these, they appear to be altered. If it is by some magic or merely an act, I cannot say. We all carry some guilt, human. If you wish to acknowledge your own wrongdoings, you may claim a mask for yourself. I am one of the last of my kind. Most of us were killed long ago, and those of us that survived are forever cursed. As you can see, I possess no grace. If I were to stand straight, my neck would snap. Moving even small distances is difficult. But still, I breathe, and that is enough. I have found peace in this forest, and the goblins protect me. It seems weird that we can't just confess to our crimes, and then... Be done with it? Why do I need more charm to confess that I have done things? Are you a friend? You look friend shape. You don't look like a friend. Sorry to interrupt your, uh... Yeah. 
I'm not actually sorry. Just in case you were worried. Endless Realm, Iberian Ruins, Hollow Town. Where'd it go? There it is. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. In the butt. Did we come this way earlier? I feel like we did. So those masks are their second self? Yeah, we definitely did. Saw a goblet over here. Where did it go? There it is. The animation for the goblet is a little bit janky, too. Not in a bad way, it just kind of like pops out of existence. This is where we found the Imbirian. Okay. Probably be a little bit more careful. We still haven't died in this game, though. We need to go buy a passport, don't we? go to the shop and buy the passport. Do we want to take the bone key? Kind of want to.
Don't even know what it does, though. All that for six coins. So the manor born, purchase Thornwood Manor. Now that you're in possession of such an esteemed property, you may want to consider certain refurbishments. Next to me is a property station. You can interact with it to upgrade and decorate a certain property. You'll find one of those on the manor grounds as well as here. There is also a caretaker who lives on the grounds. We do not pay him. In fact, we have asked him to leave numerous times. Perhaps you will have more luck. And then I wanted to go back to the... The cartographers. carry anymore. Ah, you're the fledgling cartographer, correct? Not lost, I hope. Excellent. Yes, these will do nicely. The detail here is impressive for one of your limited experience. Please take this and recompense. Ah, and it looks like you've completed an entire map region. Well done. I'll throw in some extra coin for your efforts. Seems that you have accrued quite the collection of cipher charts, doesn't it? I must admit, I'm impressed. Take this, a letter of recommendation that will grant you entry to the Erudite Academy. You should speak to the chief cartographer. I'm sure he'll have work for someone like yourself. All right. Clockwork Kingdom. Where are we? Burnwood Manor, Clockwork Kingdom. We've already been in here. So those little shrines are where uh, Wiccans are worshipping. Oh, hi. Haven't seen you before.
What was that? Why was this locked? I don't see any candles. That's really cool. Door needs a key. There's something under? So if we can get a back step on them, they're fairly easy. You're human. Have you come from outside? It's not safe out there. Have you come from outside? It's not safe out there. Okay. Well, bye. Nothing there. I'll take that. Did you all ever listen to uh, Ars Paradoxica? It was a time travel podcast. Kind of fell off of it after a certain point, but I used to listen to it a lot. You're not going to stop, are you? There you go. Okay. Don't see me. Don't see me. Don't see me. I really like these uh, creatures design. Greetings, stranger. If I were you, I'd leave this cursed place. Leave and not look back. What's wrong with this castle? 
Can you not sense it? Hallow Castle has been stricken with a terrible curse. Foul creatures stalk the land while our duke rise in agony. It all started when that damned Wiccan came to our aid. I'll tell you, the plague was better than this. If you insist on lingering, word of advice. Things are not what they seem. Those large paintings are mere illusion. You can walk right through them. If you have some jitter seed in Paradoxius, you can you could brew a potion to see through the illusion. Remember, stranger, the paintings are not what they seem. Not lying. I just made one of those. More money. Oh, hi. What did I drink last time that gave me everything? I thought it was a stamina potion, but I guess not. Tired eyes peer from a weathered face. The man wears a garb of a Wiccan priest, old and tatty. What's this? An intruder? How did you get into the keep? There wasn't exactly anyone to stop me. But the royal guard? Bah, deserters, deserters all. Then I suppose the ruination of this place is complete. I tried to read this place in illusion magic to conceal the decay, but there is only so much a simple charm can do. The castle rots, its bones laid bare. What's wrong with the castle? A dread bargain. It was supposed to save these people, not to, not to doom them. Some years ago, the castle was beset with a terrible plague. Even the Duke's son was afflicted. The apostatic union couldn't, uh, wouldn't help, so the people turned to a local god, but Pegath demanded tribute. So, my coven sent me to facilitate a contract. Pegath's spell would be sustained by a sacrifice. A sacrifice not of life, but of pain. The Duke obliged, even now a poison engulfs him in perpetual agony, so that the plague may be kept at bay, but his life force weakens, the god's spell finds new ways to take due payment, and the isle grows ever more cursed. I have deliberated for many months on what to do, my conscience is heavy with the weight of it, but for things to change, something awful must occur. There must be a way to resolve this curse. <laughs> Resolution. It is a comforting thought, I admit. Behind that painting lies a secret room. It holds a sacrificial poison, the same one that flows through the Duke's veins. The dosage is exact. An overdose would be lethal. If the Duke were to drink more, he would die, avoiding the contract entirely. The madness would end, but the plague would return. But there is an alternative. If a second sacrificial victim could be found, the god would be satiated. Equilibrium could be established once more, though Pegas taint would never fully vanish. But I grow weary of this business. I do not have the heart to inflict more pain. I could administer the poison on your behalf. Kind offer, but this burden is mine alone. I could not in co good conscience let you do this. Was there anything else?
Kaddish Rakehill, Volume 1 by John Fleming. Kaddish Rakehill awoke to a cornucopia of pain. His joints ached, his eyes stung, and his head felt as if it had been dragged down a flight of stairs. He felt his lips swollen and bloody. He checked his purse, completely empty. He probably should have been alarmed, but Kaddish was worryingly accl acclimatized to waking in such a state. Except for being in the branches of a giant tree, this was new. And it was, indeed, a very large tree. Its trunk, enormous in girth, was home to numerous dwellings, houses that clung to its bark like insects. He glanced downward and saw nothing but clouds, and when he looked up, a crooked castle rose above a mountain of leaves. Ah, a castle on top of a tree. Now, he remembered, he was in the four city of Kruve, in the northern reaches of Lundell, the only place crazy enough to build a castle on top of a fucking tree. He remembered getting very drunk in a gambling den in Rourke, and losing a lot of money to some scoundrel who claimed to be a princess. He had bet a considerable, a considerable sum on the notion that she was definitely not a princess, and to prove him wrong, she had taken him in an avian taxi to Kruve. He must have fallen asleep on the bird's back, mounted cabin, for the next thing he knew he was in the stone walls of a, din of a rather dingy castle. It turned out that the scoundrel was, in fact, a princess, and she wanted Kaddish to pay up. He refused on the grounds that, being in such a decrepit castle, she can't have been a very good princess. The last thing he remembered was a princess punching him in the face. He looked down the branch. A couple of well-armed guards blocked the exit. Ah, so this branch was, in fact, a prison. He had to admit it was one of the more pleasant prisons he had found himself in. He sat nursing his head for some time. The blue neuron star of Lundell was distant here, it kept it the tree in a grayish half-light. This was unlikely to change any time soon, seeing as the sluggish orbit of Lundell's star made a single day as long as a Riovian month. Most citizens would toil and labor for much of the long day and get drunk in equal measure for most of the long night. Kaddish, of course, got drunk during both. Suddenly, he realized a figure was standing in front of him. He had not noticed her appear, and yet it felt as though she had been there a long time. She was clothed in a sari of brilliant red, a garment from the distant island of Puria, and a veil of glinting gold obscured all but her eyes. Kaddish Rakehill, I presume. Kaddish sat there, dumbfounded, for a good few moments he, until he remembered to nod. Her eyes creased into a smile. I have heard much of your adventures, Kaddish. You are said to have acquired a treasure from every corner of the Sky Realms in your time as a mercenary. He nodded again, not mentioning that he had lost just as many treasures in various gambling halls of disrepute. I have a job for you, Kaddish. Do you remember the pirate captain Janesh? He swallowed. He remembered Janesh. He remembered the man's contemptible grin. He remembered the man's gleaming saber held against his neck. Janesh wants to meet with you. I can make this happen. Kaddish frowned. You said this was a job, so it's the pay. The woman drew a serpent-like creature from her sari. It was segmented body was like that of a giant glistening maggot, but its head was full of rows upon rows of sharp teeth. It was a vampiric parasite. The payment is your life, she said, as she flung the creature towards him. Before he could move, it whipped itself around him, and its head forced itself into his mouth. Its slimy body lurched down his throat, shifting and wriggling, until it was completely inside of him. His stomach writhed as he retched no avail. Don't worry, Kaddish Rakehill, she said. It will all be over soon. She snapped her fingers, and just like that, he fell into a dark stupor. Uh, there we go. Are you the king? Pain groans emanate from the helmet. The man rise, clearly in agony. He does not seem to notice your presence. Man inhales sharply, his head slowly turning towards your own. I am the Duke of Hallowshire. State your business. Can I help? Only that bastard Wiccan may help me now. Iron ore. Glorious treasure. Glimmer of delusion. Sorry. 
Sacrificial Poison, the bottle of crimson liquid is labeled Sacrificial Poison, was found in a secret room of Castle Hallishire. Perhaps the castle's Wiccan priest can explain its purpose. We already know its purpose. Gained a mana pot. Tired eyes peer from the weathered face. Is silent a while. Perhaps, perhaps that is the wisest choice. My indecision has led this castle rot. My indecision has let this castle rot. Perhaps you could be the one to save it. Very well. I will open the door to the poison. The duke is at the top of the keep. To enter, you must walk through an illusory wall. Was there anything else? I have the Wiccan's poison. I could end your pain. For a moment, there is silence, but for the Duke's hoarse breathing. For so long have I ached for death, though it may doom my dukedom, I am too weak to refuse. Please kill me. You slip the vial past the Duke's helmet and let the liquid trickle past his lips. After a moment, he begins to shake violently, his armor rattling, and then he is still. Uncover the secret of Halshai's castle. Wiccans now consider you neutral. All right. Uh, I would add something to the end of that. Um, once you've poisoned the king or resolved the curse. Was there a different way to resolve the curse? It did say that you could find someone to take his place. But I wasn't sure who that would be. What is that sound? It's an airship, okay. I'm confused. Which way is the um, Clockwork Kingdom?
The enchanted mask is deathly still, but it's still a guy's track you as you approach. The erudite academy... The Erudite Academy is closed to all but a chosen few. Present your recommendation or leave. Mask is silent for a long while. Just as you're about to say something, it responds. Recommendation accepted. You may enter. This is really cool. Uh, academic achievement. Gain access to the hard house of the Erudite Academy. You have gained access to the Erudite Academy, a traveling bastion of scholarly pursuits. Now, what secrets are hidden in the most acclaimed institution of the Apostatic Union? The Inquisition agent looks you up and down with a sneer. A new face. You're not another of these sniveling scholars, are you? This place fills me with disgust. A bunch of egotistical idiots playing with powers they fail to understand or control. But lately I've caught wind of something that could finally be their undoing. This place harbors a dark secret and one I intend to uncover. I've been looking for dirt on this place for months. The academy plays with fire. It flouts union regulations at every turn, the, though the council and their ineptitude always turns a blind eye. But recently my equipment detected something, a class D god entity, only a faint signal, so my superiors put it down to faulty equipment. But if it is true, god worship is a serious felony. The council would have to act. If they're really harboring some sort of minor god, it would be well hidden. I could really use the help of an outsider like yourself. Keep an eye out. You truly are a credit to the Apostatic Union. Please return to me if you have found anything of interest. One advantage we have is that most of these blundering old fools don't seem like uh, to like each other very much. I've not had much luck talking to them. They seem to hate me as much as I hate them. But ask around and you might be able to glean something I've missed. Loose change. The woman's flesh hangs loosely from her bones. Ruptures in the skin reveal muscle, sinew, and patches of bo exposed bone. She glances at you with cloudy eyes. You know, it's rude to stare, mortal. My name is Glem, the chief historian of this academy. You don't seem quite like the other scholars. Your skills of deduction are quite exemplary, mortal. I am an endless, and so, quite unlike the rest of this bunch, I look like a rotting corpse. But I've also been here the longest. In fact, I've been at the academy since before any of these scholars were even born. And the other scholars accept you? It varies. Many in the apostatic union think us endless should be burned at the stake. But here at the Academy, your kind seem to be more accepting. Although that buffoon Giovanna's, Giovanni clearly wants me thrown out with the outhouse shop. When I first came here, I hid my flesh in silks and bandages to hide my shame. But over the years, I ceased to care. People want to gop, let them gop. I've read every book in this place, and let me tell you, most of them are wrong. I should know, being older than the world rend. The Erudite Academy is over 200 years old. Unlike the other universities in the Apostatic Union, it is not tied to a single state. It exists independently. For much of its history, it was a fringe establishment, refusing to align with the gods or Wiccan covens. In fact, many of the treatises and polemics that laid the ground for the God War originated from this very establishment. And so it should come as no surprise that, since the inception, the Union has favored the Erudite Academy with high-profile commissions and secretive projects. As you can see, the Academy exists on the Flying Island. It moves between territories to where it's needed most. We have been stationed on these Oniaric Isles for about a year now. Have you heard of something untoward going on here? 
Oh, this place is secret, that's for sure. There's a chamber underneath this building, accessible from the garden outside, that I've seen someone entering in the dead of night. There's no doorway, though I've seen a number of suspicious candlesticks around the academy. Mortal wizards do love to hide their dirty little secrets with enchanted candles. A Foolhardy Voyage by Stoltis Nav Navigatio, 1426. As I write this account, my quill wavers in my hand. I can see the skin peeling and flaking from my fingers, blood and pus seeping from the cracks. Before the sepsis sets in, I hope to recount my fateful voyage to the Imbirian city of Notham. It was my final voyage, and these will be my final words. The expedition was funded by the Erudite Academy. They had assigned numerous documents and waivers, no doubt written from the safety of some Riovan legal office, clearing them of any accountability. I was not perturbed. I thought our success was assured. The vessel we traveled in was outfitted with the latest in cipher technology. We had hired an aetherist who hermetically sealed the thing with numerous cipher wards and provided us with finely crafted garments that allows us to survive in the outer regions of the cosmos. But when I asked the aetherist to accompany us for a healthy salary, no less, he replied, The Underlands? Nay, I have flown into the cosmos on six occasions and stared into its inky blackness. I have delved into the dread depths of Slev's poison lake and escaped unscathed. I have been to unspeakable places, but the Underlands? I will not go there. We anchored our galleon in the south southernmost skies of the Apostatic Union, close to the near lawless archipelago of the Oneric Islands. The galleon's captain was wary of pirates, but I insisted we would be back before the nearby Neuron Star withdrew its reddish glare. Our shuttle detached itself from the galleon, shaking as we made our descent through the clouds. My crew sat uneasy as the light faded. In the four hundred years since the world rend, few have visited the world's surface and lived to recount it. But our landing was uneventful enough. We organized the hatch to find the glistening bones of a city stretching towards the sky. Huge metal structures arched overhead, supported by the girders of an impossible scale that no living blacksmith could reproduce. We set to work examining the ruins. Legend describes how the Imbirians wrote nothing with ink. They stored their knowledge in vast networks, networks of cipher accessible to any citizen, so that each and every person was as learned as the great scholar or polymath. Lamentably, this proved to be true, for we could find no book, no page, no scrap of writing to shed light on the mystery of their culture. What we found were towering halls, once used for inscrutable bureaucratic purpose, but which now lay overtaken by fungi. We saw evidence of the rail ships that hauled cargo of an unim unimaginable weight, and the great portal relays that are said to have connected every corner of the world. We stared, bewildered through our eye goggles of our protective hoods. My faith in the wonders of Aetherist technology was well-founded. The accursed Earth could not infect us with its taint. So long as our suits remained intact, we were safe. But there was just one factor I had not accounted for. The scream echoed through the halls. We spun to see one of our crew collapse on the floor, blood gurgling from his suit. As we made our way to investigate, I caught something in my periphery, too quick to see, and I turned to see another of us standing plainly with no head upon her shoulders. She crumbled into the darkness without making a sound. So we ran. The suits were cumbersome and the air thick with spores. I cannot say how the other crew met their fate. I heard cries but did not falter in my flight. In my arrogance I had assumed the tales of monsters were but fictions of dying men. For what could survive down here, in this wasteland? But as I neared the shuttle, exhausted and terrified, one of the creatures appeared plainly before me. I have heard tales of ghosts, but this was not one. It was a shadow incarnate, a swirling amorphous presence. A spectral arm emerged from that dread mass which became a scythe as it swung towards me. I ducked and sprinted to the shuttle, narrowly escaping its ephemeral blade. As I closed the shuttle's hatch, I could see the creature in chase, and I swear I saw a face there, staring at me, not with rage or malice, but with a terrible sadness in its eyes. When I returned to the safety of the Sky Realms, it became clear that the creature had torn a large gash in my protective suit. Over the coming days, I became wrapped with terrible agony as my skin blackened and split. I exist now, a week since our voyage in the state of prolonged decay, my consciousness being the last remnant of humanity left in this revolting task of a body, this revolting husk of a body. It will not be long until I succumb fully to the death veil vale curse. Let this be a warning to those who wish to follow in my footsteps. The Imbirian civilization, which ruled every corner of the world some 400 years ago, is forever lost. And to go in search of its secrets is to meet a terrible fate. Um, what are you?
Nothing. Uh, where's this garden? The woman tinkers with a small crystal, brows furrowed. She taps it with a stylus before it sees with that uh, magical energy and she drops it cursing. God damn it, you broke my concentration. It'll take hours to recalibrate that. She glares at you for a moment. But seeing as you're here, you might as well make yourself useful. I'm Natalia, chief engineer here. Now tell me, how would you like to travel anywhere instantly? Instantaneous travel? Sign me up. That's the spirit. You see this big chamber here? I had it brought up from the islands below. It's a portal chamber. It's tech from the academy, but it's actually pretty old. The Erudite Academy moves around a lot, and it seems one of my predecessors tried to set up a portal network on these very islands a long time ago. It looks like they never got it working, but I think I found the missing link. I've calibrated a crystal tech as a key of sorts. It should activate the portals and allow for safe travel, but I just need someone to test it out. That's what I wanted to hear. See this crystal key? I, it will allow you to activate the portal chambers. Once you've activated, you can teleport to any of the other portals you've found. The only trouble is that I've only found one, but the Academy records state there should be many more scattered around the island. You don't need to find them all. If you can link this one to a portal chamber in the Endless Realm and another in the Clockwork Kingdom, I'll reward your efforts. We don't have a destination yet. Okay. I remember seeing one of those in... Was it Pwill? Man mumbles to himself as he grinds a mortar and pestle. He sums in Bolivia's stir presence until he mutters, I'll be just a moment, Ellen. He stares at the concoction of herbs uh, frowning. Suddenly he hawks a gob of phlegm, and spits it into the bowl, grinds and sets it aside, seemingly satisfied. Now then, I'm Don Gi, prime alchemist of this old academy. What can I do for you? Can you teach me about alchemy? Better than most, I'd wager. With alchemical equipment, equipment, you can combine ingredients to make new concoctions. Feel free to use the equipment in my study. Now, the academy has been floating over these Oniaric Isles for about a year now, and I've gotten a flavor for the herbs that grow there. Brew two eyes of Pagath for a potent health potion. Just the, the same. Paradoxicus uh, revitalizes mana, and Jitter Seed will restore stamina. But there are plenty more potent conversations, my, uh, combinations, mark my words. Paradoxicus. Where is this garden? Is this the garden? So let's look for the candles. Did we read this book? The Hidden Truth of Cipher by Anonymous. The, idea, the art of cipher magic is practiced in every corner of the apostatic union based on the learnings of its universities. Yet there is a paradox at the very heart of their scripture. To speak openly about it, you will, uh, will you see the full wrath of the Inquisition fall upon one's liberty. And so, for fear of rotting in some dark cell, I must hide the authorship of this treaty. treaty. But let, me know, uh, let it be known I am a scholar of some renown. It is entirely true that there is a hidden language to the cosmos, a series of symbols that comprise an incomplete alphabet, known as a cipher. Individually, these symbols are meaningless, but when strung together into lines, they can have a profound effect. This is the basis of all magic. But while human scribes must painstakingly etch out each symbol, their pens heavy with the import of the task, the gods' very thoughts are writ in cipher, and magic comes to them easily. Nonetheless, the gods are still bound to the rules of cipher. This was a philosophical justification for the god war, the renunciation of wicked control, and the forming of the apostatic union. For if humans and gods draw from the same power, the argument went, then why must, we, why must we submit ourselves to divine hierarchy? Indeed, the first union polymath theorized that the cipher itself was created by humanity, that in the cave, cave dwelling days of prehistory, humans discovered a power in themselves and built a language around this power that etched itself upon the cosmos. As human superstition 
As human superstition led them to pray to divine beings of their imagination, such beings were made manifest from that belief. Such is the reasoning that lies at the very heart of the apostatic union, that man predated the cipher, and to defy this, uh, defy this supposed truth is to commit an act of treason in the union. But in the past few decades, scholars have made incredible advances in cipher research. We can study the cosmos with precision not enjoyed since before the world end. And what have we discovered? That there are certain rules written to the very fabric of existence. A sentence, theoretical but very likely to exist, threads itself through this world and every world. This sentence explains the limitations of our spells, why we cannot reverse the flow of time, why we cannot resurrect the long dead, but most importantly of all, it was written long before humans existed, and is written in cipher. By whom? We cannot say, and likely never will, because the Inquisition has taken every possible step to repress this research. I have witnessed my contemporaries disappear, others shredded into silence. I have watched entire library wings burn down to the ground, but it is imperative that we spread the truth. An ideology founded upon a lie is rotten to the core. <clears throat> Did I talk to you? Really? This is what passes for a scholar these days? Please refrain from getting your muddy footwear on the flooring. Well, seeing as you're here, perhaps you may be of some use. Back in Venna, I had twelve servants in this damnal place, and nary a soul will lift a finger to help. Perhaps you're different, hmm? I am Giovanni Bori of the Bori family. I am destined for great things, father says this. But for now, I'm merely the chief cartographer of this wretched place. Traditionally, not much. It's a rather menial task for navy vessels and merchant map makers. But the trouble with living on floating bits of rock is they have a habit of moving around, and old maps become useless. So the Academy is working on a more inventive solution. Like magic maps? Aha, you are one step ahead, I see. Because the central islands of the Apostatic Union are held fast with powerful magic, there's not been much need for enchanted cartography until recently. You see, these Oniaric Isles lie on fringes of, in, of Union territory. They drift around, crash into each other, even break apart. New maps are produced and circulated all the time, but even so, captains can't rely on them out there. So the Academy is working on a network of cipher spells to track an island's movements, to update maps, maps instantly. Rather ingenious, wouldn't you say? Of course, the scholars here do all the clever calculations. I provide the impetus. All right. Um, you don't do anything. Going up. Guys, I'm I'm kind of starting to get scared that this is gonna be more than five videos. Oh What's the whole integrity? Are we out of orbit? Uh, I think the whole integrity is fine. He is still for a moment, blinking. Ah, apologies. I thought I was back in the cosmos for a moment there. I'm Jerome, Jerome Verrier, the head aetherist of this place. Pleased to meet you. So, you want to go into the cosmos or what? Uh, have you any... Uh, no. What is ethology? Ethology is a study of the aether. It is a noble art, one of the oldest. We track the neuron stars, behold the beauty of the infinite cosmos, and even travel there ourselves. But this newfangled union would rather throw coin at uh, more rudimentary rudimentary magic. Cypher spells help that help trade. War expansion. The youth of today have their eyes on the purses, not the stars. What can you tell me about the cosmos? As you leave the planet's atmosphere, you see it. The neural network, the cosmos. On this planet, we have hundreds of neuron stars. As you know, uh, the one here orbits these islands every 12 hours and glows red. Others glow blue, yellow, purple, of varying sizes and orbital uh, trajectories all over the globe. And they're all connected by synapses, but those synapses also stretch out to the neural network, to the cosmos, and when you see it, there aren't just hundreds of neuron stars, no. They fill your vision. They never end. We have, with magical means, peered inside the fabric of our very skulls. Our minds look just like the cosmos. An uncanny reflection. We have been debating what this means for hundreds of years, but truly, your guess is as good as mine.
It said earlier that we have a uh, delusion, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Come on. Is there a shuriken over here? Who's been playing with shurikens? We already went down this way, right? Uh, is there a bed where we can rest? Asking you shall receive. So it's nighttime now. I'm assuming that this is a door. We need to find the candles, is what he said. Not you. you. Where are we going? You? And... Not you. Got any candles up here? Uh, one thing that I do request is that we be able to see through these telescopes since they're clearly pointed at something.
That takes us back down. Looks like that. Uh, Z fighting. Can't collect any more. Got that on. You have any candles? I should turn my candle on, like IRL. Got you. Divine captive, you entered a secret chamber in the Erudite Academy, which contains a captive god. After a little uh, rooting around, you also found a journal belonging to Jerome Verrier, the head aetherist of the Academy. You could confront Jerome at the Observatory Tower, or take the evidence straight to the Inquisitor who is looking around the Academy. Got any delusion for me? You got a brain. Look at that. Look at that brain. Let's go talk to Jerome. Oh, that's down. Jerome is up. Ah, it's you again. Wait, who are you again? I found the god you've been hiding. I clearly didn't hide it well enough. Its name is Xanarib. Must be one of the last gods on Union soil, I suppose. What were you doing with it? Oh my, it's fascinating research, if I do say so myself. As you are no doubt aware, gods draw power from human belief. A devout follower is like a source of food to them. 
So I've been exam examining this process. Gods do not have organs, simply a nucleus surrounding us, uh, surrounded by strange matter. Excuse me. Uh, gods do not have organs, simply a nucleus surrounded by strange matter. This turns out to be remarkably similar to the human mind, full of neural synapses. The implications are astounding. Is it safe to harbor a god? Ah, quite safe, I assure you. Before the god wars, Zanarib was a god of revenge for a nearby village, but I have muted its power with cipher words. Just last week, that oaf Giovanni lost my favorite pin, and on a moment after I found out, he stubbed his toe and was in quite a lot of pain. If Zanarib was at its full strength, I'm sure Giovanni would have fallen out a window to certain death or something. In fact, thinking of it, maybe I muted its power a little too much. I found your journal. It's fairly incriminating. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, it's true. The Apostatic Union has outright banned this kind of research, even in this academy. The fools, do they realize what could be achieved if they did not run from what they fear? Please, I would ask you to return the journal to me, and forget this whole business. If the Inquisition were to get their hands on that journal, they would punish the whole academy for my deeds. Yeah. You have my sincerest thanks. Uh, have you got a license for that god? Resolve the issue of the illegal god. I will see to it that Xanarib is relocated just as soon as I finish my study. Let's go sleep. And then I think I'm going to end the video there. We did a lot this video. Alright, game is saved. I'm going to head out for the night and I will see you guys in the next video.